How's it going everyone? I'm Himu Raman with Shaping Elements, and today we're going over exploded views, a technique used by mechanical engineers and industrial designers, or anyone trying to convey how a product or thing is pieced together. So without further ado, let's get started. For this particular sketch, I'm using Strathmore Tone Tan paper, four Prismacolor colored pencils in black and white, and a set of Copic Cool Gray markers. Today we're sketching a wash, which is primarily composed of circular elements. So we're going to explode this product in a vertical fashion. And because we're going to have a bunch of ellipses, I've drawn two outer guiding lines that will constrain where those ellipses will go. To start off, we're using a C1 Copic marker. It's super light and allows us to explore where each of the elements will fit on the page. When you explode a part, each of the components will sit on its own respective plane. So you can see that we're initially going through the sketch and laying out where each of the components goes. So far we've laid out the outer glass, the watch face itself, the bands, the lower glass face, the hands, so on and so forth. Again, each of these components is exploded onto its own respective plane. At this point of the sketching process, we're really trying to get the perspective right, especially since they're ellipses. And now that we kind of have a feel for where everything fits, we can work our way up into a darker marker. At this point, we're using a C3. With this marker, we're committing to some of those previous lines, and while we're at it, adding a bit more detail. Again, we're at a stage where most of these guidelines will disappear as we continue to sketch, but it gives us more of a foundation to build off of. While we're at it, here's a quick tip for ellipses. You'll notice that as I draw each of the ellipses, I rotate my page upside down, to the left, to the right, all over the place, and partially because sometimes that's just the angle that I'm most comfortable drawing that curve at. But also because as you rotate the page and flip the perspective that you're looking at it from, you'll be able to tell whether one of the curves or ellipses is just slightly off or not. Uh, one of my teachers way back when told me to sometimes pause and take a break and flip your sketch upside down. You'll be surprised at how easy it is to catch little imperfections in your sketch, oftentimes with perspective. Anyways, the next big step is committing to those lines and those details with a pen, and that's the most intimidating part for me, especially with ellipses. However, that was the whole purpose of starting with a C1, working our way up to a C3, and then using a pen. If you think about it, with that C3, you've outlined the core components and details that you're now going to commit to with a pen, and it gives you a base layer of elements to trace. It's almost like tracing. Instead of attacking a blank page immediately with a pen, you've got some guidelines to go over and commit to. Using a pen really is the most intimidating part because you are making pretty bold commitments to what you have on the page, especially having already done all that hard work. So just make sure to relax, take it slow, and don't worry if you mess up because, especially because it's that Strathmore Tone Tan paper and you have those colored pencils, which we'll get to, there are ways that you can make up for little mistakes. Anyways, now we're transitioning on to marker. I like using this analogy a lot, but it really is like creating your own coloring book. With the pen, you've outlined all of the pieces of your sketch, and now it's as simple as staying within the lines. Well, maybe not as simple. So as we work our way through each of the components, I like to start with a lighter marker to set a base layer of color and work my way up with a darker marker. For each of these components, you have to remember that they're different materials and they have shadows cast on one another. So for example, the glass is transparent, of course, but the housing of the watch itself is an anodized aluminum. And I won't go over uh, ways to depict different materials in this tutorial, but you can learn a lot just through observation, watching how I depict that anodized aluminum, or finding random objects around your house and seeing how light and shadows play off of those materials. You can see, for example, at least, in this case, the housing of the watch has these darker and lighter striations across, but in a really soft, subtle way, no harsh reflections. 
As I continue to sketch, let's talk about exploded views. Remember, they're a tool, a powerful tool for conveying how things fit together. So however your sketch is composed, make sure you're drawing attention to the features that matter most. The way your components mate, or their size respective to one another. You get the idea. Anyways, back to sketching. Now we've broken out the colored pencils. This is where I think the magic happens. This is where you make your components pop and add the detail that's necessary. So for example here, that white colored pencil is really what makes those reflections work. What makes that top piece look like glass. If any of you are into photography, you'll know that in post-processing, you really make your picture pop by increasing that contrast. Uh, the color pencils play a really big role here in making your lights even brighter, your darks even darker, and just making your sketch overall more vibrant. You'll want to remember that no surface as flat as it is, is ever one plain color, right? There's always a subtle gradient, and you can achieve that with the markers to a certain extent, but I find that the colored pencils really allow you to vary the lighting on that surface. The white and black colored pencils are also where you really get that crisp, reflective look on certain materials. So especially with the metallic materials, that white pencil makes those reflections pop. Another thing to keep in mind is that in the real world, there are almost no perfectly sharp edges. Everything's got a slight fillet or chamfer to it. So in order to depict that, I usually use a white colored pencil, make sure it's sharp, to go over that crisp edge, showing where the reflections will bounce off of it. Again, this is one of many of the fine finishing details that really makes your sketch and your piece seem more real and most of it is accomplished with colored pencils. So just to recap, we started off by drawing out our planes and the basic geometries with a really light marker, a C1, worked our way up into a C3 and added a bit more detail, creating these guidelines that we then went over with a pen. After outlining all of the important details, we've created a coloring book of sorts, which we then proceeded to fill in with our markers, starting light and getting darker, adding detail where needed. Once that base layer of color was added with the shadows and highlights in their general location, we finished up the sketch with colored pencils, the white and black Prismacolors, making certain materials pop, creating reflections, transparencies, Adding even the little details, like the numbers uh, on the watch face, or the tiny little calendar that sits below it. Don't forget to use that white color pencil to depict sharp edges. And because this is an exploded view, don't forget to add annotations as needed. Naming any important components, materials, finishes, mating methods, and any other information you want to depict in this sketch. And there we have it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, give it a like, subscribe for more tutorials, follow me on Instagram for more sketching inspiration, and stay tuned and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks!